Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. Lauren Hugelmeyer first met Matt Phelps when they were in middle school, although they were not particularly close friends at the time. However, years later, when both Lauren and Matt were 26 years old, something unexpected happened. Matt, who had not spoken to Lauren in a long time, reached out to her on Instagram. Curious about the unexpected request, Lauren accepted Matt's request and started following him back. Intrigued, Matt decided to take a closer look at Lauren's Instagram page. As he scrolled through her posts, he found himself liking each one. Something about Lauren's intrigued him, and he couldn't help but be drawn to her. As time passed, Lauren and Matt continued to text and talk on the phone daily. They discovered they had a lot in common, particularly their love for Harry Potter, Star Wars, and other geeky things. Their conversations were filled with laughter and shared interests, and their friendship quickly blossomed into something deeper. What made Matt particularly appealing to Lauren was his dedication to his faith. Lauren had grown up in a Christian household, and God was very important to her. She loved that Matt felt the same way, and she found solace in their shared beliefs and values. To the outside world, Lauren and Matt appeared to be a couple deeply in love with one another. Their relationship seemed filled with joy and happiness, leaving those around them to believe they had found their soulmates. It was only a matter of time before Matt decided to pop the question to Lauren. Dale, Lauren's father, was deeply protective of his daughter. He had always been concerned about her well-being and safety, and the thought of her getting married to someone he barely knew filled him with concern. After Lauren and Matt became engaged, their loved ones threw an engagement party to celebrate their exciting news. Lauren was thrilled and dressed to the nines in a stunning white dress. However, things at the party took an unexpected turn when Matt's mother arrived dressed in white, an apparent act of disrespect towards Lauren. It was evident to everyone that Matt's mother was not pleased with her son's decision to marry Lauren. Unable to contain her frustration and disappointment, Lauren approached Matt after the engagement party to confront him about his mother's behavior. However, Matt dismissed her concerns, stating that he had grown up with his grandparents rather than his parents. Matt went on to say that he did not have the best relationship with his mother and that what she thought did not matter to him. After becoming engaged, Lauren and Matt made the decision to relocate to Raleigh, North Carolina, in 2016. Despite the change of location, they remained committed to their Christian values and continued to live a life guided by their faith. Matt was employed at an in-home care company. His hard work and commitment were recognized, and he was named Employee of the Month. Lauren was incredibly proud of her husband's dedication and hard work. However, Lauren's contributions were just as significant. She worked diligently to support their life together, often taking up to four jobs simultaneously. In addition to her full-time job at a Fortune 500 company, Lauren found ways to contribute further to their financial stability. One of her side hustles involved babysitting. Additionally, she worked in the church nursery, taking care of children while their parents attended services. Furthermore, Lauren had a side business selling candles. Her entrepreneurial spirit led her to explore various opportunities, and she was determined to succeed in whatever endeavor she pursued. The idea of owning her own business held a particular allure for her, as it offered the potential for financial freedom and the opportunity to create something meaningful. Every Tuesday night, Lauren and Matt would make the trip to her parents' house for game night. It was a weekly event that they both looked forward to. Matt would always show up on time, eager to spend quality time with Lauren's family. He seemed to enjoy the opportunity to bond and connect with them. In November 2016, Lauren and Matt celebrated their love in a wedding ceremony in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Their special day was filled with joy, laughter, and a touch of their shared passion for nerdy things. One of the cutest touches that made the wedding memorable was incorporating some nerdy stuff Lauren and Matt love. The groomsmen, dressed in dapper suits, each held their lightsabers, transforming the wedding into a Star Wars-themed celebration. Shortly after Matt and Lauren married, cracks started to appear in their relationship. One of the main issues was Matt's discomfort with Lauren's close friendship with a male friend from church. 
Matt suspected this friend had feelings for Lauren and was concerned that their friendship was too close. Lauren, however, tried to reassure Matt that she felt nothing for this man and was committed to her marriage. Matt's trust issues were rooted in his past experiences with his first marriage. He revealed that his previous spouse cheated on him while she was on a mission trip. When she finally returned home, she informed him that she never loved him and was leaving him. The betrayal and abandonment left Matt deeply wounded and struggling for a long time. According to Matt, the impact of his first marriage was profound, and he described feeling messed up emotionally for a long time. As Lauren and Matt's marriage progressed, Matt seemed increasingly unhappy. His demeanor changed from being upbeat and content to a darker and more depressed state. He seemed stuck in a dark place, and it was evident that something was weighing heavily on him. Around this time, Matt's attitude towards his faith became increasingly distant. He seemed unhappy and disengaged from attending church services with his wife. This decision was a significant blow for Lauren, as her faith was paramount to her. She felt that her husband's unwillingness to share this aspect of her life with her was like a slap in the face. Lauren couldn't help but notice that Matt seemed to disregard whatever she cherished entirely. It was as if his love and appreciation had faded away, leaving a growing void in their relationship. Lauren longed for a deeper connection with her husband, built on shared values and interests, but Matt seemed disinterested. Matt started displaying signs of laziness that greatly irritated Lauren, who was working multiple jobs to support them. His pattern of finding a job, working there for a few weeks, and then abruptly quitting became a recurring issue that caused Lauren immense frustration. What particularly upset her was that Matt was spending their money at an alarming rate, leaving her struggling to earn it back. Lauren and Matt's friends and family members tried to pull him out of his depression, but their efforts seemed to fall on deaf ears. Instead of seeking help or engaging in meaningful activities, Matt would spend countless hours in front of the TV, engrossed in playing video games. This behavior affected his and Lauren's financial stability and strained their relationship. Lauren found herself in need of support due to Matt's unusual behavior and took action by contacting her mother and sister. Lauren opened up to them, sharing how exhausted she was working four jobs and how disheartening it was to come home from a long day and face a messy house, laundry waiting to be done, and food that needed to be prepared. Throughout, Matt seemed to prioritize playing video games and spending their money, leaving Lauren feeling neglected and overwhelmed. Despite the increasing distance between them and the strange behavior exhibited by Matt, Lauren remained committed to her marriage and was determined to make it work. Her dedication to their marriage was evident in her unwavering decision to stay by Matt's side, despite the challenges they faced as a couple. She remained steadfast in her belief that their marriage was worth saving. Around the time when Lauren and Matt hit their four-month wedding anniversary, their relationship was as strained as ever. One significant change that raised concerns was Matt's absence from Tuesday night game night at Lauren's family house. This decision hurt Lauren and her family and seemed intentional, as they saw it as a deliberate disrespect towards them. Lauren was feeling distant from Matt and knew that something needed to change. Lauren had tried to communicate her feelings and concerns, but it seemed Matt wasn't listening or didn't care. She was concerned that their marriage was drifting apart, and she didn't want to lose the love they once had. At that time, Lauren was desperate to save her marriage with Matt and was willing to do anything to make it work. So, when Matt proposed that he and Lauren go on a road trip to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where his family lived, Lauren agreed. She thought getting away with Matt could benefit their strained relationship and hopefully get things back to how they used to be. When Lauren and Matt arrived in Bowling Green, Kentucky, they were met with a surprise. They decided to embark on a trip with Matt's mother, her husband, and his parents. However, things didn't turn out as expected. Despite arriving together, Matt's mother's feelings toward Lauren had not changed, and she continued to give her a chilly reception. Matt's mother maintained an icy demeanor throughout the trip, causing tension within the group. As the trip went on, Matt's mother arranged a photo shoot for the family, and she included Lauren. Lauren was excited to be included in an activity by her mother-in-law, hoping that this would mean a shift in their relationship. 
Several days before the photo shoot, Matt's mother texted Lauren that everyone would be wearing blue. Eager to follow the instructions, Lauren went shopping and bought two new blue outfits, one for herself and one for Matt. She was looking forward to wearing the outfit she had chosen and being included in the photo shoot. However, when they arrived at the designated location, they discovered that everyone except Lauren and Matt was wearing white. Confused and disappointed, Lauren turned to Matt's mother for an explanation. However, instead of acknowledging her mistake, Matt's mother acted upset with Lauren. She began to lash out, making it seem as if it was Lauren's choice to wear blue. Frustrated by the situation, Lauren tried to explain that she had followed instructions and bought blue outfits accordingly. However, Matt's mother continued to escalate the situation, throwing a fit and canceling the photo shoot altogether. When Lauren and Matt returned from Bowling Green, Kentucky, their relationship continued to deteriorate. Matt, spending an increasing amount of time alone writing in his journals, started displaying even more peculiar behavior. His behavior worried Lauren as she observed changes in her husband's demeanor. Lauren began to suspect Matt was stealing money from the Disney fund the couple had set aside for their future trip to Disney World. Her suspicions were heightened when she discovered that Matt might have also taken money from her purse without her knowledge. Lauren would often call her mother crying during this time, when she suspected Matt of stealing money from their vacation fund and her purse. She once told her mother that she only had enough money to cover the bills for one month and didn't have any more. This revelation left Lauren anxious and afraid, as she knew she and Matt were facing a significant financial challenge. Less than a year before they started their life together, Lauren and Matt entered their marriage with $10,000 in savings, which they believed would be a solid foundation for their future. However, by this point in their marriage, Lauren and Matt had found themselves in financial instability. Despite their initial optimism, they had managed to deplete their savings significantly. Matt's excessive spending quickly drained their financial resources, one evening, Lauren arrived home from a long day of work and texted Matt about their dinner plans for that night. During the conversation, she also mentioned that a female co-worker had visited their house earlier in the day. This woman's visit sparked concern in Lauren, given the strained state of her marriage to Matt. Lauren couldn't help but wonder if she should be nervous that a woman had sought out her husband at their home. Her unease grew as she contemplated the truth behind Matt's first marriage. Driven by her curiosity and a desire to uncover the truth, she decided to delve deeper into this matter. Matt and his first wife, Brooke Truitt, met in college and were college sweethearts. After dating for two years, Matt proposed to Brooke, and they soon married. However, Brooke would later say that Matt cheated early in their relationship, and Matt confessed to Brooke he had kissed another girl. Although hurt, Brooke eventually forgave Matt. The second time Matt cheated on Brooke was right before they were married. That time, Matt begged Brooke for forgiveness, and she eventually forgave him and married him. After Matt and Brooke married, their relationship quickly became strained. Brooke later accused Matt of spending money on stuff they didn't have the money for. Meanwhile, she was the one working 40 hours a week to support them. The constant strain in their marriage took a toll on Matt and Brooke's relationship. They grew distant and found themselves drifting apart emotionally. Eventually, Matt and Brooke divorced. In a shocking revelation, Lauren informed her parents that she discovered it was Matt, rather than his ex-wife, who cheated on his first marriage. Her family, filled with anger and a sense of betrayal, were afraid of what Lauren's protective father might do to Matt if they told him the truth. As a result, they remained silent and kept the news to themselves. As Lauren and Matt's marriage continued to deteriorate, Lauren's frustration with her husband grew exponentially. The discovery of yet another betrayal shattered their already fragile trust. Just when Lauren thought she could rebuild her faith in their marriage, she discovered that Matt had again broken her trust regarding their finances. Upon receiving their latest credit card statement, she found that Matt had splurged $1,200 on video games and another $1,100 on gift cards. These impulsive purchases, made without Lauren's knowledge or consent, only deepened her frustration and fueled her doubts about Matt's commitment to their marriage. 
Despite Matt's continuous breach of trust, Lauren was determined to do everything in her power to save her marriage. Divorce did not even enter Lauren's realm of possibilities as she was committed to making things work. As a result, she decided to plan an intervention with her mother and sister to confront Matt about his excessive spending habits. During the intervention, Lauren, her mother and her sister aimed to assist Matt in developing a plan to address his and Lauren's budget. Matt exhibited a positive outlook and genuinely desired to rectify his and Lauren's financial issues. He seemed genuinely committed to making positive changes in their marriage. On August 31, 2017, the same woman who Matt used to work with suddenly appeared at Lauren and Matt's front door. Lauren was caught off guard and upset to see this woman as things had been going so well between her and Matt. Matt informed Lauren that he was leaving with her, explaining that she needed his assistance with something. Lauren was furious with Matt for this decision and began frantically texting and calling him. However, Matt remained silent and did not answer her calls or texts. In her fury, Lauren turned to her sister and vented her frustrations. She expressed her belief that Matt was ruining her life and told her sister that it was over between them. Lauren also mentioned that she had informed Matt about her decision to end their relationship. In the early hours of September 1, 2017, a 911 call came into a dispatcher, and on the other line was Matt Phelps. Matt told the dispatcher, I think I killed my wife. I had a dream and then I turn on the lights and she's dead on the floor. I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed and I think I did it. She's not moving. Oh my God, I'm so scared. She didn't deserve this. His Matt was trembling with fear and panic as he spoke to the dispatcher. He sounded unsure of himself, his voice filled with shock and guilt. During the phone call with the 911 dispatcher, Matt explained the reason he might have killed his wife. According to Matt, he had taken coracidin cough and cold medicine and may have taken more than he should have. Matt stated that he took the coracidin medication because he knew it could provide relief and help him sleep better at night. Coracidin is an over-the-counter medication commonly used to treat common cold and flu symptoms. It contains a combination of antihistamines, decongestants, and pain relievers, which relieve nasal congestion, cough, and sore throat. However, Coracetin has also been associated with certain side effects, including drowsiness, dizziness, and confusion. These effects can be more pronounced when taken in large amounts or combined with other medications. Minutes after Matt called 911 to report that he had killed his wife, the Raleigh Police Department arrived at the scene of their home. Upon their arrival, they found Matt standing on the front steps. The officers promptly took him into custody, ensuring he was safe and secure. Once inside the house, the officers discovered a horrifying scene in the master bedroom. Lauren was found in the fetal position, lifeless, on the bedroom floor. This scene was gruesome, with blood splattered all over the carpet, walls, comforter, and bed. Even for the most seasoned police officers, the sight was deeply disturbing. The overwhelming amount of blood and Lauren's lifeless body painted a horrific picture. Crime scene investigators arrived to begin their meticulous task of collecting every piece of evidence. They meticulously examined every corner of the house, searching for clues that could provide insight into the events that unfolded that night. The investigators meticulously documented the scene, taking photographs, collecting samples, and gathering any physical items that appeared to be related to the crime. As the crime scene investigators continued their search for evidence in Matt and Lauren's house, Police officers had to make the difficult decision to travel to Lauren's family house and inform them that their beloved daughter was dead. Upon knocking on the door, the officers received a response from Lauren's mom, who asked if there was anything wrong with Lauren. The officer somberly replied, Yes, there is. With her heart pounding, Lauren's mom pressed further, asking if her daughter was dead. The officer once again answered, Yes, she is. Overcome with emotion, she dared to ask the most important question. Did Matt kill Lauren? With a heavy heart, the officer confirmed her suspicion, uttering, yes, he did. After receiving the news that her mother had been killed by her husband, Lauren's sister was awoken by the sound of her mother's piercing screams. Filled with shock and horror, she raced down the stairs. 
Upon reaching the bottom of the steps, the police officers stood by the front door and confirmed her worst nightmare. Her sister was dead. At the police station, Matt was questioned by the police regarding his involvement in the murder of his wife, but Matt eventually decided to request an attorney. The questioning was halted once Matt made this request, and the police took action. They transported Matt to the hospital to undergo a blood test to determine if he was under the influence of Coracidin at the time of the murder. Following the blood test, Matt was transported to the county jail, where he was arrested for murder. After Matt's arrest, the police conducted a thorough examination of his journals and electronic items to determine if they could find any additional evidence pointing towards his motive for murdering his wife. While searching through his internet records, the officers noticed a peculiar pattern in the weeks leading up to Lauren's death. Matthew had been researching topics related to coicidin and the effects of mixing it with alcohol. Police discovered the existence of a secret Instagram account belonging to Matt, where they found numerous posts related to death, the devil, and the infamous movie, American Psycho. These posts depicted violent anti-Christian imagery that seemingly contradicted the public image Matt projected of himself. He portrayed himself as an aspiring pastor in public. The toxicology report for Matt came in and it was revealed that he had a small amount of cold medication in his system. However, it was not at the toxic level that would have caused hallucinations. This discovery provided additional evidence supporting the argument that Matt was lucid and not under the influence of any substances at the time of Lawrence's death. Lauren's autopsy report revealed she was asleep on her side when Matt entered the room and stabbed her. After stabbing her once on her side, Matthew proceeded to roll over Lauren and stabbed her multiple times in her face. The autopsy findings also indicated that Lauren fought to save her life. Several wounds were found on her arms, suggesting that she attempted to defend herself. In total, Lauren sustained 123 stab wounds. On October 5, 2018, Matthew Phelps pleaded guilty to the first-degree murder of his wife, Lauren. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. During his sentencing hearing, Phelps addressed his former in-laws, expressing remorse and regret for his crime. Matt acknowledged what he had done, expressing his overwhelming feelings of guilt and shame. He referred to himself as a monster and emphasized that his actions were senseless and mindless, lacking any rational justification. Lauren's mother told the court, Lauren was beautiful inside and out. The actions of Matthew James Phelps have forever changed me.